unconditional love that Jesus has for us. We may never be able to understand it, but I want you to know that He loves you. Amen. He died for you. Yes. And say when He rose again, that He gave us victory. Yes. Yes, he what did. an awesome God we serve. Amen. It's an amazing grace. We praise you, Jesus. Yeah.
Well, we're going to continue to worship the Lord this morning, and and uh, I'm going to ask you, before we do please stand with me, uh, we're going to continue to press into God. And one thing that we know that is that in the presence of the Lord, there's fullness of joy, and at His right hand are blessings forevermore. So I want to invite you to just join with me, join with the worship team on this platform as we press into God, as we go after God with all of our hearts and worship. And as we do so, let the Holy Spirit just come and move upon your life in a very special way. Will you do that? Let's worship Jesus Christ right now.
right there in the comfort of your home. Will you join with us and pray for our country? How many of us our country needs prayer? Thank you. Let's pray. Let's pray for this service today. As God's already been moving and we're seeking the Lord for an outpouring of the Holy Spirit. How many of us know like never before we need the Holy Spirit in the church?
Neither is it name. We cannot discard or disclaim the truth of the scriptures, and that is that the baptism of the Holy Spirit is for today, and that it is for you. And that the initial physical evidence of how we receive the baptism of the Holy Spirit is the initial physical evidence of speaking with other tongues. Amen. And when we do a good uh, 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 study of the scriptures, we learn, we discover that this is in order and that this is for us. And uh, so what's important for us as pastors and as ministers is to execute the scriptures, uh, search the scriptures, and declare the word of God. And the Holy Spirit will then bear witness with our spirit that this is the truth, that this is the word of God as we look to the word of the Lord. So today we continue with uh, who is the Holy Spirit. So today I'm going to talk about the Holy Spirit with us. The Holy Spirit with us. Will you join with me in the word of prayer right now? Heavenly Father, in the name of Jesus, we thank you for your manifest presence, both here in this building as we congregate together as the people of God. And we thank you, Lord, for all of our VLCC families watching the service via Facebook and YouTube. We pray for an open heaven there and here. We pray that today, Lord, that this will be a Bethel experience, the house of God and the gate of heaven. Like the tree that you gave to Jacob of old, where he saw that ladder touching heaven and earth. At the top of the ladder was God with the Lord our God. And at the bottom of the ladder there was Jacob. And in this dream, he saw angels ascending and descending up upon Jacob. And so, Lord, in the New Testament, in the Gospel of John, when Jesus, you came to call Nathaniel to follow you, Lord God, uh, you, you, Jesus, you spoke to Nathaniel and said to him, from this day forth, you will see the heavens open and the angels of God ascending and descending upon the Son of Man. So Lord, we know that that ladder in Jacob's dream was a type of a cross. And Lord, by way of a cross, you opened the heavens for us. You give us access to the holy of holies by the blood of the Lamb. And there are spiritual riches and abundance that you would want to download into our soul and into our spirit today. So Lord, once again I pray, let this be a Bethel experience where Lord, we are in the house of God and we're at the gate of heaven. And bring forth, Lord God, the ministry to every individual Amen. person under the sound of my voice, both in person and at home. Father, you are gracious and liberal and generous in giving gifts to man. And I pray in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ that you will distribute gifts to men now in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. And that, Lord, your people, Lord, will be filled uh, fresh and anew. Lord, with the promises of God, with the Spirit of God, and bring forth, Lord, that ministry, both collectively and individually, in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. And we trust and pray today, dear God. Lord, that to the balance of the service today, as you bring us to the close work in a little while, Father, that we will be able to say, Lord, we have been in the presence of God. And not only here together, but as we leave this campus today, that Lord, your presence goes with us. Because as Moses prayed, Lord, if your presence doesn't go with us, do not send us there. God, I pray that your presence, oh God, will always go before your people. And the Lord, you will be with your people. And especially in this hour. As you, Lord God, I pray that you will shed time out. That your manifest presence will be, Lord God, upon your church, that congregation, together and individually, in the name of our Lord Jesus Christ. And Father, we say thank you, Lord, for what you will do today. Through the proclamation of the Word of God, may you be glorified now in the preaching of the Word of God. May your name, Lord, be exalted. May your people be built up, Lord, in the thing. And Lord God in heaven, for those that have yet not come to a saving knowledge of Jesus Christ, we pray, dear God, for the praise of God to preach them today. It is in Jesus' name that we pray. And all of God's people said amen. Amen. And amen. And amen. The Holy Spirit with us. Once again, I believe that while there are a number of things that oftentimes as followers of Jesus, we may take for granted and we may forget, perhaps not intentionally, but in some way, we may forget certain things and we may take for granted. One of those areas in our spiritual pilgrimage it is it is living out the spirit-filled life. Living the spirit-filled life. And you know, I, I, I remember our, our former secretary, uh, former secretary of the General Council of the Assemblies of God, talking about the gospel, and even in the preaching of the Word of God, 
uh, uh, it, it, it does not require a, a, you or, or I to be a rocket scientist. He had a, a, a PhD in, in rocket science, so I guess that's why he, he made that statement. But it's really all about knowing that we are at the feet of the Lord Jesus, walking in a relationship with Him consistently. And as we do that, from a place of grace and not of works, He does what He does best to, to shepherd us. Like the psalmist declares in Psalm 23, He leads me in the path of righteousness for His name's sake. As we put our hand in the Master's hand on a daily basis, He will take care of that part of leading us. He said, my sheep hear my voice, and, and, and they follow me. As we hear His voice, He leads us, and in leading us, He leads us to that place of living the Spirit your life. Let's take, a, let's take a look at a passage of Scripture this morning. In the Gospel of John, chapter 14, in verse number 15. I'm going I'm to read this text from the New Living Translation, but if you'd like to turn in your Bibles, take notes. Uh, John, chapter 14, verse 15 through 18. And these are the words of Jesus. He says to us, If you love me, obey my commandments. And I will ask the Father, and he will give you another comforter. He says, I will give you another, uh, another advocate who will never leave you. He is the Holy Spirit who leads into all truth. The world cannot receive him because it isn't looking for him and doesn't recognize him. But you know him because he lives with you now and later will be in you. No, I will not abandon you as orphans. I will come to you. So I want us to notice a few things that John reveals about the Holy Spirit living with us. First of all, we need to understand that you and I don't work to receive the Holy Spirit, as I stated that earlier. You and I are to welcome Him into our lives, receive the Holy Spirit by faith. But the Lord Jesus says, if you love me, obey my command. So we welcome the Holy Spirit by living a life of obedience to Him. Do you recall when you first came to faith in Christ? And you began your brand new life in Him. You were just born again. You were so head over heels in your will with Jesus. You remember that? Your first love? And, and, and what happened at that time? The Lord was speaking to you. And as He was speaking to you, you felt something called conviction. And do you recall that when He convicted you, it was never in a condemning way. It was never in an accusatory way. It was never to make you feel guilty or bad. But it was a conviction that was letting you know, don't do that, that's wrong, or do this instead. Remember the Word, remember the Scripture. Do you remember that? And, and, and what did the Holy Spirit do? He, let me just, just, just condense it to about three things. Number one, He will never allow you to go to places Jesus would never go. He will never allow you to say things Jesus would never say. And He will never allow you to do things Jesus would never do. Do you remember that? That's the Holy Spirit that was right there in your conversion as a new believer in Christ speaking to you. And so your response and my response to Him was obedience. It was obedience. And as we respond in obedience to the Holy Spirit, what we're doing, we are increasing our capacity to receive Him. And as we increase our capacity to receive Him, inevitably what's going to come next, it's going to be a mighty outpouring of the Holy Spirit. Yeah. It is an outpouring of the Holy Spirit of God where before you know it, you will be speaking with other tongues. Let me give you just a brief example from my own personal life. As I'm born again, as I'm born again by the Spirit of God, in March of 1986, the Lord began to do that. And I did not know that this was the activity of the third person of the Holy Trinity, the Holy Spirit, at work in my life. But I remember when the Holy Spirit nudged me, He convicted me and said, you can no longer go to those places you used to go. And, and because I was so in love with Jesus, I did not want to sin against Him. I did not want to do anything that would grieve Him. I didn't know. Little did I know that what I was doing then, I was obeying Him. 
And then the next day, uh, when I wanted to say something that it just went contrary to the scripture, I, I did not realize it, but I didn't say things that I thought it was okay to continue to say. So I, uh, so I obeyed the Holy Spirit, and, and so what happened was, between March and July, August, there was a consistency of obeying Him. And each time that I was obeying the Holy Spirit, I was growing from one degree of glory to another degree of glory. Are you with me? Amen. Yeah. And that's where the Holy Spirit is inviting you to walk with Him. To grow, go from one glory to another. And it is not that complicated. You don't have to read a 500, 1,000 page book on, on, on pneumatology or the study of the Holy Spirit to grasp and embrace this revelation. It is so simple that as you obey Him, listen, a life of obedience to the Spirit it is a life of holiness in the Spirit. We grow from one degree of holiness to another degree of holiness as you obey the Spirit. So you don't have to feel like, like dirty and filthy and yucky and ugly or whatever that maybe you're not doing enough good works to live a life that is pleasing to the Lord. All you need to do is listen to the voice of the Spirit, obey Him, and as you do, He's leading you from one degree of revelation to another degree of revelation of who Jesus is. Because isn't He ultimately who you are pursuing? And the Holy Spirit is going to make sure that you get that which you're thirsting for, that you are able to embrace and receive what you're longing for, because at the end of the day, the longing of your soul was pleasured by guess who? By the Holy Spirit of God. And he will not disappoint you. He will take you from one degree of glory to another. And so I recall between June, uh, March of 86 and July, August of 86, there I am in this little Pentecostal Holiness Church. And I'll never forget, when I got to that church, I used to play in a band, and I used to play the bass guitar. But when we got there, we're setting up the instrument before the congregation arrived. I looked at the band leader, and I said, I said to him, I just, I just don't feel like I'm supposed to play the bass guitar. Can you play, play the bass for me tonight? And after all, he's the one that taught me, he said, sure. And then I went to the pastor of that church, and, and I said, Pastor, would you please pray for me? Because... I'm the only Christian in my family, and, and, and I'm going through some things. Would you please pray for me? He said, absolutely. He took the anointing oil. He anointed my head with oil in the name of the Lord. And then he says to me, Brother Jesse, just go over there to the altar and pour your heart out to God. So I'm, I'm a baby in the Lord. I'm like four months old in Jesus, okay? This is the summer of 1986. So you know what I did? I did exactly what the pastor told me to do. I went to the altar, and I began to pray. But as I began to pray, I began to just sense a burden on my heart, over my heart for the nation to come to Christ. I began to pray for countries to come to Christ. I began to pray for my family to come to Christ. And the next day, I just pray. And then the next day, my hands are up in the air. I wasn't used to doing that. I've only been a Christian for about four or five months. And then my hands are up in the air. And then there are rivers of tears that are going down my face as I'm burdened and broke before the lost will come to Jesus. And then the next thing, I'm weeping and I'm praying and I'm praying for the lost. And the next thing, I am praying in an unknown tongue. And I remember in the back of my head that many, many, many years ago, people used to pray in tongues. And as I'm praying in a heavenly language, I am praying like 150 miles an hour. That's the best way to describe it for you. I am praying with authority. I am praying with tears. I'm praying in an unknown tongue. And I can no longer pray in Spanish. I can no longer pray in English. I can only pray in other tongues. And as I bawled and wept and prayed for the nation, for the loss of my family, for California, for whatever, then eventually I came to the place where I was coming down and, and I was trying to go back to Spanish and I couldn't, go to English and I couldn't, and I just... I just kept on praying in my own tongue. And then I finally, I opened my eyes. And when I opened my eyes, little did I know, over two hours I've come and gone. The whole service had taken place. And the janitor of the church was waiting to lock the doors when I got done praying in tongues. You see, that was my introduction to Pentecost. 18 year old kid, fresh out of high school, in love with Jesus. 
Listen to the Holy Spirit. And whenever he would touch my heart there, I would just obey. Church, it's not that hard. And listen to the word of God. Jesus said in John 14, verse 15, If you love me, obey my commandments. You see, the commandments go beyond the Ten Commandments, the moral law of God. The commandments is whatever he commands you to do. The commandment may be, there's a family you need. Go feed them. The commandment would be, see that guy right there at the, at, the, at the gas pump? Go tell them about Jesus. I remember I was talking to one of the brothers uh, in the Lord, and he was telling me about a time when he was witnessing to a CHP officer at a, at a gas station. And, and, and the and CHP officer was open to the gospel. The CHP officer surrendered his life to the Lord Jesus Christ. The CHP officer got on his knees at the gas station as he surrendered his life to the Lord Jesus Christ. Do you know why that happened? Was because this brother obeyed the command of the Lord. As we obey him, we, we, we welcome the Holy Spirit. We get to increase our capacity for the fullness of Jesus and for the fullness of the Holy Spirit of God. Let me give you another verse. Acts chapter 5 and verse number 32. This is what we read in scripture. We are witnesses of these things. And so is the Holy Spirit whom God has given to those who obey him. You see, God gives the Holy Spirit to those who obey him. Now, you may say, well, pastor, I can see now that there's some areas in my life that I can obey you. Now, I get it. There's nothing that you and I can do to unravel our past. Listen, God's got this. He will take care of that. But what God is more concerned is not so much of dealing with your past as much as surrendering your past to the Lord. Give my spiritual reset button and from this day forward begin to live a spiritual life by a life of obedience to the Holy Spirit. Yeah. So it's obedience. You see, he said that, that you and I, when we receive the Holy Spirit, we receive an advocate. And there's a difference, a major difference between an advocate and an assistant. You see, the Holy Spirit is not here to assist you and I. Because when it comes to the Holy Spirit, the Lord calls us to surrender to Him. Because when we say, Jesus, take the will, we're saying, Holy Spirit, be in control. Yes. Holy Spirit, you take the will. Yes. You see, an assistant may assist somebody with your agenda. But the Holy Spirit is not here to assist you and me with our agenda. Oh, He is here to instruct us unto God's agenda. You see, He's here to get us unto God's agenda. He's got an agenda that's far larger and bigger and greater than yours and mine. You know what I believe? That when God looks upon your plans and when He looks upon my plans, I don't know, but He may kind of shake His head and say, is that as big as your agenda can be? Because God's agenda is so much greater. And God doesn't call you and I to try to figure out His agenda. He just simply calls us to walk in obedience to Him. I remember when we first arrived here to preach on that particular Sunday, June the 10th of 2018. And this church was going to take a vote on the new pastor. And I shared the illustration. Let me share it with you once again. Because it has everything to do with living a life of obedience to the Spirit. You know, it's kind of like you take your date out to dinner. It's at night. And you go to an expensive restaurant like Ruth's Chris. You're going to pay a hundred bucks for a piece of meat. Amen. And then you're going to pay fifty bucks for asparagus. And then $25 maybe for dessert per person. Okay? I mean, it's a very... Anyway, so so you're there because some of those know our, our spouses, our days, they're worth like $500. Out of every $25 anniversary, yeah, yeah, I'm kidding, I'm kidding. So, so you enjoy that dinner together with the family, I'm sorry, with your, with your day with your spouse. And then you get out of the restroom, you get back into the car. You fire it up. 
But when you fire it up, your car is pointed directly either at a tree, either at a car that's in front of you, either at a, at a street that's on the other side of the sidewalk. But anyway, when you fire up your car, the headlights come on, they are not pointing directly at your house. They're not. So you pull out of the parking stall, and you may have, a, 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 I don't know, 50, 100 feet, whatever amount of feet in front of you of light. And with that light that's produced there by the vehicle is enough light to help you where to make a right turn, where to make a left turn, where to keep going straight, go under a bridge, go around a ravine, or whatever the case may be. And it gives you just enough light to illuminate, illuminate your path all the way home. The Holy Spirit, as He moves upon your life and mine, is giving us enough light that He knows that we're able to contain for that moment. You see, if God unrolls the entire scroll of your life, it will blow your mind and mine. But He's only going to give you and I enough light, enough revelation for that moment. And Jesus taught us to pray, give us this day our daily bread. Don't give us this day our bread for the next 50 years. It will kill us. We will not be able to resist or endure such revelation. But don't give us enough light to get us all the way home. So the Holy Spirit, as He leads you, and we trust Him with enough light. No, 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 God. But I need to know everything. And God says, no, I'm not going to reveal to you everything. I'm only going to reveal to you enough revelation that you need for this moment and for this hour. And if you trust me for that amount of revelation, I promise you, I will lead you all the way home. If I can put it that way. He is a divine reminder. I've got an iPhone. It's expensive. I have a confession to make. I am horrible when it comes to technology. When I need help, I turn to my wife. If she wants out of her ability to help me, I go to my daughter. If she just can't help me, then I'll spend and add some bucks and then get all the other professional help. Because you see, with technology, how many of us would admit that pastors not alone in this? There's so much about technology that there's probably 80 to 90 percent of that stuff in there that we don't even know how to use. Come on, don't leave it by myself. Okay? There is so much, like for example, you should have the ability, that phone, that expensive technological device, has the ability and the capacity to help you remember. I don't know how to use a reminder to help me remember on a very expensive iPhone. Okay, I get it. Maybe it's my fault because I'm not taking the time to research it. It's kind of like my daughter Kayla will say, well, yeah, have you read the instructions? <laughs> or Norma will say, uh, hon, uh, it's right there. It says do this. Okay, enough of exposing my weakness when it comes to technology, okay? But even then, even then, that the technological, technological device, guess what? It's an imperfect commodity. Because it's fabricated, it's crafted, it's built, engineered by them. There's someone divine called God, yes. the Holy Spirit. Yeah, and you see, because He is God, the Holy Spirit, He knows the very end from the beginning. Right. He knows exactly what will happen, not only from A to C, but everything between the B and the Y. Right. According to your life. And because he is divine, he is God, he does not forget the promises that God has made to you and to me. How many, how many of us have found ourselves sometimes, you know, I, I need to find that promise. I need to go here. So why don't we do something? We'll go to Google, we'll punch in. God will never leave no for a second. Bam! Then the Google spits that out, you click on that, and there is that verse. That's awesome that Google can assist us and help us that way. But how many of us, there are sometimes those moments, you may not have that Google. You may not have that handheld device. 
but you've got the greater reminder called the Holy Spirit of God. And, and the Bible says, and the Bible says in John 14, verse 26, but when the Father sends the advocate as my representative, that is, the Holy Spirit, he will teach you everything and will remind you of everything I have told you. He is a great reminder in the world. He reminds us as God's people of the promises of God. So let us never forget that. We therefore must understand that because he is a divine reminder. Listen, you and I are lifetime we have heard anecdotes, personalized illustrations like I shared with you today. Um, great books that we've read over our years. But there's one thing that we must get in this message today and get nothing else. What the Holy Spirit is going to remind you and I of is not of the great story that was told or the great illustration to expound and, 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 and uh, and, and make that scripture, the scripture become more loose and more clear. The Holy Spirit is going to remind us of God's word. What does that mean to you and I? It means for you and I that therefore we must go deep into the word. It means that you and I must be baked and saturated with the word of God, the Holy Scripture. It must be, it means that you and I must therefore handle the word of life faithfully in our daily pursuit of Jesus. Because the one thing that the Holy Spirit is going to bring to our remembrance is going to be the word of God. So, if, if you are like some, I trust and pray that you're not, but there are some saints love Jesus, but hardly ever open this book to read it, much less to study it and research it and engage in a Bible study where we're cross-referencing scripture and we discover the beauty of how scripture interprets itself because it is then and it is there that the Holy Spirit is bringing forth such beautiful and amazing revelation and they're going, aha, oh my gosh. And then, and then when you come to church and you hear the pastor preach, what's going on in your spirit? Your spirit man is saying, yes. And your spirit may say, Amen. And then what happens? You begin to cry. Why? Because there is a witness in your spirit. Because you pick in the Word of God. The Word of God is the Word of the Holy Spirit. Can somebody say Amen? Hallelujah. Well, let me say one other thing. Let me say a couple more things. Let me say about three more things. Okay, so the Holy Spirit reminds us that there's something else that the Holy Spirit does, and I've already touched on that, but I'm going to give it to you anyway. You may want to jot it down. Is that the Holy Spirit convicts us. Some of us remember that point in the message. Yes. Okay? Yes. Just jot it down. John 16, verse 8. And he, when, he, when he, the Spirit of truth comes, he will convict. Now let me tell you something about conviction. You see, he says he will convict the world of sin, of righteousness, and of judgment. So when he convicts us, he will convict us in our personal walk with God. But he will also convict us as a body of believers when we come together collectively to worship the Lord our God. Can somebody say amen? amen. And that's beautiful when the Lord comes and moves in our lives. Now, as I endeavor to bring this message to a close today, let me share with you um, a couple of closing thoughts here, okay? Let me just give a, a couple, few pictures here. Let me say, let me, let me just say this. The Holy Spirit, and, and, and you know what I'm going to hear. The Holy Spirit, when He moves upon your heart and mind, He's going to lead us to walk in the demonstration and in the power of the Holy Spirit of God. And I need a way of worship you with your sisters. I'm, I'm struggling, but I'm going to stop here yes. and just look at the Holy Spirit. Are you okay with that? Amen. Thank you, Lord. Yes. Come on, yes. let's do that. Let's do that. Spirit of God right now. I don't know where you are right now 
in your in, in your walk with the Lord. But this one thing I do know for certain. You're here because you love the Lord. And you love the Holy Spirit. How many of us love the Holy Spirit? You love the Holy Spirit. And if you love the Holy Spirit, I love the Holy Spirit. I don't want to be filled with the Holy Spirit. And I want to increase the capacity in my life for the fullness of the Holy Spirit of God. And in order to be able to increase the capacity, is for a life of consistency, of consistent, consistent obedience to Him. So if you and I have been disobedient to the Holy Spirit in some form, in some way, it's not about condemnation, and it's not about guilt. It's all about conviction. But it is a conviction that comes with love. How many of you know Jesus is the chief shepherd, and He's a bishop of our soul? And he comes to deal with us in love and in compassion. And he calls us and he invites us to come together. Because you and I need the Holy Spirit like never before. To live that spiritual life. So if you are there and you say, yes, I do love the Lord. I love the Father. I love the Son. I love the Holy Spirit. And I know that God spoke to me loud and clear today. And that I need to listen to his voice. When he speaks to me and he says, don't go to those places Jesus will never go. Don't say those things that Jesus would never say. And do, don't do those things that Jesus would never do. And, 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 and trust me in the amount of light and revelation that I'm giving to you to get you to that next step, to get you to that next level, to, to get you to that next spiritual dimension. Trust me with enough light and that revelation that I will never mislead you, that I will never forsake you, that I will never abandon you. Trust me, that's what the Lord is saying. Are you willing? Are you ready? Are you prepared to surrender to the Holy Spirit of God today? Are you ready? That is you right now. I'm going to invite you to step out of your seat and come. Come on. We'll practice the physical distance in here at the altar. But I'm inviting you to come as the Spirit draws you today. And let's come before the Lord. Team, would you help me with this camera right here? Uh, Cindy, if somebody would you help me with this camera? Let's move them to the side, please. Thank you. And uh, let's just make sure that it is safe. Us families are coming down. We're coming to a place. A place that is safe. How many of us know the altar? The altar is a safe place. This is a place where we belong. 